You wish to speak to your commandant. You'll have to be blindfolded before you can enter the fort. Well, blindfold the officer. This is the last time we'll have to wear these infernal blindfolds. Careful there. Gentlemen, keep in mind that these British will do all they can to unnerve and irritate us. Yes, sir. And by all means, don't show any reactions to their demands. That's right. Be very careful. We are well prepared to withstand their siege. And Saitez, if you're nervous, Try not to show it. Even with the blindfolds on, they don't look scared. They didn't come here to surrender. Not with an army camped in those woods, they didn't. It ain't the redcoats and the toys that got me worried. It's all them Indians with them. Maybe they'll tell Ganvord we can just march out of here and be gone. Now, why would the British do a thing like that? Because we ain't part of this. All we're doing is escorting supplies. Well, now, boy, why don't you just walk out through them gates? And the first Indian you see, you say to him, I'm just a Massachusetts man. And I just happen to be standing around that fort when you got here. And by your leave, I'll be getting home now. Still rather be sitting at Fort Dayton right now. And that Indian's going to say, Oh, I can see your scalp ain't as inviting as the Yorkers. And I hope you have a pleasant journey. If you ask me, it's bad luck getting caught here. I am directed by General Simminger to inform the Commandant that the General has prevailed upon the Indians to agree that if the garrison without further resistance, shall be delivered up to the investing army. The officers and soldiers shall be allowed to march with all their luggage and private property without molestation and take themselves when they please. But otherwise, the general fears the consequences should you not consider this. <sighs> Those prisoners uh, we took yesterday say they're bringing up six, maybe seven cannon out there. So it's going to get noisier than all them musket balls they've been throwing at us for the last five days. They say Herkimer got killed at Oriskany. All his men got whipped. Now, that's a lie. That messenger what got here said he was on his way. Well, he didn't get here, did he? I am likewise directed to remind the Commandant, that the recent defeat of General Herkimer must deprive the garrison of all hopes of relief. General Burgoyne is already in Albany, and uh, sooner or later this fort must fall into our hands. Now, you just take some of this if the pain persists. All right, Doctor. I wish one of the women had stayed with her. We get enough to worry about without delivering babies, too. Gansvoort was right, sending most of them down river with the children. It's a lot safer at the settlement. Safer? Like those three girls the Indians caught last week? Woodruff, as long as I live, I never get used to the sight of a scalping. Indeed, the Indians are so exceedingly provoked and mortified by the losses they have sustained in late actions that they <laughs> daily threaten to destroy the settlement. Therefore, General Simmager, from an earnest desire to prevent the bloodshed of not only men, but women and children, ardently hopes that the Commandant, by complying with the terms now offered and immediately surrendering the garrison, will save himself from further regret over the effects of their vengeance. Do I understand you, sir? You have made a long speech which, stripped of its superfluities, 
amounts to telling me that if I do not deliver this garrison into the hands of your colonel, he will send his Indians to murder our women and children? You will please reflect, sir, that their blood will be on your hands and not ours. I hope he can do it. Who? Do what? Gansvoort. Got to stall those British somehow. That's all he can do to help arrive. In short, gentlemen, you may tell your general that before I will consider delivering this garrison, his demands must be drafted in the proper form. I tell you, I'm getting out. They'll kill us for sure before this thing is done. Start talking foolish. They gotta get in here before anyone gets killed. I tell you, the Indians will find a way in here and scalp us in our sleep. Polishing before they let us shoot. Sergeant, we're low on water again. As soon as it gets dark, we'll send out a party to the creek. Wish I knew what was going to happen. It's too quiet. The shooting would start up again. I heard the officers say there's going to be a three-day stand-down. Well, if you ask me, they wouldn't have taken half the pains to get us to surrender if they wasn't afraid we'd beat them. Try to convince the militia to exert themselves on our behalf. Well, you know I'll do my best. But at all costs, get to Albany and inform General Schuyler of our situation. There's not much time. Tell Schuyler we have less than five weeks of supplies left. And we're dangerously low on powder. Peter, I will find help somewhere. There he goes! Oh! Schuyler, August 9th, 1777. Sir, your letter of this morning's date I have received, in answer to which I say that it is my determined resolution with the forces under my command to defend this fort and garrison to the last extremity in behalf of the United American States who have placed me here to defend it against all their enemies. I have the honor to be, sir, your most obedient, humble servant, Peter Gansford. It appears, Sighters, that the British have received my communication. Yes, sir, I believe you're right. Sighters, see that all provisions are moved from the barracks and placed on the parade, lest any of the buildings catch on fire. Yes, sir. All public papers and money in the hands of Mr. Hansen and the papers belonging to the south to the paymaster will be lodged in the southwest bomb room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two 
days and nights. God, when is it all going to end? About the time they run out of cannonballs. When are we going to shoot back, Lieutenant? When we can see him, Sergeant. And we'll be wasting any gunpowder. Maybe Benson was right. He wanted me to go with him. I can't get no sleep. Leave off so I can get some sleep! Uh, Colonel, the British have their trenching parties working. How far away are they? About 150 yards, sir. It'll give their cannon an easy range. Too easy. We'll have to do something. Of course, being as close as they are, they make a pretty fine target themselves. Load the cannon with grape shot. Maybe that'll harry them a little. Yes, sir. So, the next move begins. Their cannon will pound the walls until they are breached. Unless General Arnold arrives. are using too much powder and firing at their trench, Colonel. How low is our supply? Too low, if they attack us, sir. Very well. Pick 12 of our best marksmen and set them to work. If the British get their cannon into that trench... When do you think they're going to come in on us? they got to make a hole in the wall first. We're six days. Why don't we do something? The Lord of glory is my life and my salvation too. God is my strength, nor will I fear what all my foes can do. One privilege my heart desires, O oh, grant me mine abode among the churches of thy saints, the temple of my God. There shall I offer my requests and see thy glory still, shall hear thy messages of love and learn thy holy will. Dear Lord, would you tell him to stop the shooting so we can get some sleep? No, it ain't so. Sergeant! Apparently the brine leached out of two of the barrels, sir. We've had to throw out a thousand pounds of meat. All right, Captain. We'll make do. Colonel Willett ought to be back in a day or so. Sir. They're mortar bombs that scare me, the way they come down on you. Seventeen days. Lord help us, Colonel Willett, if you didn't find help.
No, sir, nothing. Very well. Captain Savage, amuse them with a few rounds. Sir, Sergeant, range 200 yards, solid shot. Handle cartridge. Fire! Ram down, cartridge. And fire. Fire! They aren't firing. Fire! You don't suppose that deserter was telling the truth? If he was, and the British really did break camp, do you think he was right about General Arnold coming with 3,000 men? Tell Captain Jensen to take 50 men and go have a look at the British camp. Gentlemen, you've just been witness to the birth of a fine baby girl. Thank God. Somebody ought to go tell the colonel. Well, we got there, moving very careful, but there wasn't a single soul there, not British nor Indian. Here, take this. They left in a hurry, too. We brought back wagon loads of supplies. And cannon, too. And cannon? Put that over there with the rest. The Tories Captain Jensen took prisoner claimed their Indians turned on them and stabbed them with their own bayonets. But he didn't find out if Arnold is really There's coming. There's a party approaching. Looks like Colonel Willett. Captain Jensen, prepare a salute. Colonel, the general is at the edge of the field. He's here. Captain Jensen, I'll have that salute now. Yeah. 